racing is to have a high steel fences all around both sides of the track, which to me uh, takes away from the character. Of the event. Like right there, that shot there, the Formula One set would want guardrails uh, down both sides and probably all those trees cut down, which would really be a sin and a shame in my view. Yeah. But unfortunately, uh, that, that's the trend. And uh, I would hate to see Bathurst uh, so, made so antiseptic a circuit. Uh, just have a Formula One race here. I think you're better off with a great sedan race like this. Exactly. Thank you, Chris. Steve Masterton completing another lap as he heads for a class win potentially here at Bathurst today in the Hardy Ferrado 1000. A very likable young man is Steve Masterton. Uh, he seemed quite surprised last year when he won Rookie of the Year. Uh, he's a protege of Barry Seaton. Barry Seaton has done a lot to help this young man's career and of course uh, the family uh, the masterton um, homes of course are uh, uh, well known within new south wales in fact uh, as you'll notice when we cut to it steve Marston, quite a good looking young guy and a, a fellow uh, who has his head put on the right way for motorsport second year at Bathurst. Uh, the car that we're driving is a capri mark ii hatchback european capri uh, the car was prepared by Barry Seaton. Uh, last year we drove a Capri Mark I, also prepared by Bo Seaton. Phil Lucas was my co-driver last year and he's also driving with me again this year. We were lucky enough to win the three-litre class last year uh, and also lucky enough to win the uh, Rookie of the Year. Unfortunately, I can't win the Rookie of the Year again because it's only something you can win once. I think the, uh, the biggest problem we've, we've got uh, this meeting is uh, Lacus Manicus and uh, I would say Laurie Nelson. Uh, they're, both, they're both driving European hatchback Capris which are very competitive and we've run the car the last two days and uh, the lap times have proved to be very good. We're trying some new tyres, uh, brakes are superb and I can't see any, any reason why the car will not finish the race. The new Mazda rotaries are going remarkably fast, particularly down the straights uh, we're clocking speeds at 143 miles an hour and these cars are passing us so we're not out to uh, try and run in first position all day but uh, I think our car will be there at the end. The, the Mazda rotaries are a little savvy on fuel uh, which does require an extra, extra fuel stop but uh, we'll be making two stops only uh, changing tyres on the last stop only the first stop will just be uh, fuel and driver change and uh, just run the race, uh, mainly I think concentrate on sitting back in about third position to half a day, half the meeting, and uh, then start to wind her up a bit. That's <laughs> terrific. Yes. yes. A great uh, piece there from Steve Master. And as you can see, he was giving Jim Keogh plenty of uh, gun ho treatment over the top of the mountain. Weather conditions here at the moment uh, about the same as they were early. Four seasons and one race in one day. It's starting to spit rain again down uh, along the pit straight. It looks like a light shower up at one side of the mountain and it's dry down the other. Steve Masterton once again completes one more lap. Probably the most dramatic part in the last 15 minutes of this race has been the fact that Jim Richards, as people at home are well aware, to see whether or not uh, he had a tyre problem. That was a late change from uh, one lane across the racetrack. Anyway, uh, Alan Grice, who has been tailing uh, the Marlborough Holden dealer team, yes, it was a tyre for Steve Masterton, uh, it must have gone out just before he turned to come onto pit straight. And he took uh, what officials would uh, term some very, very late action in just turning across the circuit into pit row. They're going to uh, put some more fuel in while they're here in the pits, change the tyre. No, doesn't require any more fuel, no driver change intended there. But Alan Grice, to get back to the real story of the race in the last 15 minutes, Jim Richards is out in front, co-driving, of course, for Peter Brock in this particular stint. And Alan Grice has made up almost one minute in second place on the race leader, Jim Richards, and is closing. Here we have the situation of the, uh, the Masterton Holmes car. Apparently getting set to change that wheel. Uh, the gap from Grice to Moffat is 1 minute 07 seconds. Moffat is in third place.
coming out with pit stop that was probably intended later, but they're out and back in the race. Steve Marston going out at approximately the same time is uh, Charlie O'Brien and the Phillips entry, the Tirana number 21. Here's Alan Grice. And Johnny Goss, of course, uh, a former winner of this uh, race, uh, a man who, of course, won the Australian.